Tonight on The Food Hospital, a fad dieter who survives on liquid. How much of this do you drink a day? About three litres. Three litres? Yeah. Wow. Have Lucy and Shaw met their match when they meet strongman Phil? What's the damage on a Friday um, night? Probably 16 pints of Guinness. What? You've got your work cut out. <laughs> We investigate the possible brain-enhancing power of blueberries. This could actually mean quite big bucks for a business. And Pixie asks, can onions rival aspirin and reduce your risk of heart attack? First to arrive at the food hospital is a 53-year-old man from Rochester who's eating himself into an early grave. Weighing in at over 24 stone, six foot three Phil is morbidly obese. Phil is an actor and semi-professional powerlifter who thinks his size helps him win strongman competitions and movie roles, playing gangsters and giants. Get a plate out. He lives with three of his five daughters who worry he eats way too much fatty convenience foods. I've got a bit carried away. Can you break a sweat with me? That's how much you do. You break a sweat. <laughs> Our dad eats so much. Stupid. Stupid, Stupid, Stupid amount. He loves to eat. Like it's, a ho it's like a hobby. It is like a hobby. Some people like to go golf or swimming. He likes to eat. But it's all processed food. Oh, all processed. Pasties, lasagnas. Lots of fried breakfast, lots of meat, lots of sausages, fried chicken buckets, Chinese. There's a lot of convenience food. Um, but I need that fat. If I eat light and try to eat healthy, I'm hungry and, and I'm miserable. The amount you eat and how much is terrible. I'm not fat. I'm an international finely tuned athlete, I'll have you know. I ended up filling my face last night. I knew it was wrong and I knew I shouldn't be eating it, but it was lovely. Phil may think they taste lovely and keep him big and strong, but his excessive consumption of takeaways and convenience foods could also be killing him. A couple of times I've had to stop when I was on holiday walking upstairs and take lungfuls of air in, and people, you know, I've had people say, You're all right? And I'm thinking, Well, you know, am I all right? I look big and I can turn a car over, but I can't run for a bus. If each flight of stairs I go up is getting harder and harder, it ain't going to take a lot of working out what's going to happen. And I thought the thought of that happening to me to leave the, the girls would be devastating. It is upsetting because we want him to be healthy, we want him running about, and we want him here for a really long time. I want to see grandkids. And if I don't do something soon, I might not. Sorry. So can dietitian Lucy Jones and consultant surgeon Shaw Summers reduce this man mountain of fat while still maintaining the muscle mass Phil needs to be a strong man? Tests reveal Phil's blood pressure is raised, his liver is slightly inflamed, and most worryingly, he has high cholesterol, which evidence strongly indicates increases your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. The cholesterol level going up is the first sign that things mm. aren't right, that you're eating too much of certain foods which are upsetting the balance of fats in the blood. The fact that your liver tests are also slightly abnormal does mean that your liver's now under a bit of strain. It's having to process so many calories. If that carries on for another decade, it might put too much strain on your body systems. But what you have to lose is that belly. But um, it's funny, this, I mean, poke it, it's rock hard. Behind um, it yeah, is where, where all the damage is being yeah. done. Fat around the abdomen indicates that the body's vital organs are also surrounded by fat which means you are at a greater risk of chronic disease. The belly that a lot of men get is the most dangerous type of mm. fat. You know, women who get fat hips, it's actually a lot safer. Men with their fat tummies, that's the type of fat that's linked to heart attacks and, and strokes. Yeah. Unless you really make a change, then it is going to do away with you. Clearly, we've got to put a prescription together that allows you to carry on training, mm -hmm. allows you to carry on powerlifting, but without all the bad bits in. So can I ask, do you eat anything green ever? 
No, I don't like anything green. Peas, I'll struggle. So why don't you eat anything green? I can't eat leafy. If I put a bit of cabbage in my mouth or a bit of lettuce, I'll gag. I can suffer a firm brussel. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's a bit mushy... Uh, you've got your work cut out. <laughs> But wait till they hear what he drinks on a weekend wind down. Go on then, tell me how much you get for what's, on a Friday what's night. What's the damage on a Friday um, night? Probably 16 pints of Guinness. What? Oh, easily. Crikey, yeah, Riley. It's only drinking one night, though, you see. So you average that out. Yeah, but, but you know that's worse, don't you? <laughs> it's called binge drinking, but that's the best type. You get pissed on binge drinking, you see. If you were doing that two or three nights a week, you would be on your knees now. Yeah, well, I was on my knees Friday after the 16 pints of Guinness, yeah. funny enough. But that was getting the pesties <laughs> out of the oven. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Joking aside, drinking that amount of alcohol will only compound Phil's high cholesterol problem. And Lucy's prescribing a diet plan that will help anyone that wants to lower their cholesterol and lose fat but keep their strength. So, Phil, what we would like to do with you is give you a cholesterol-lowering plan that's also heart-healthy, OK? So, what that means in English is it's not going to be low-fat, because for your sheer calorie needs, there has to be a, a moderate level of fat, but it's going to come from very different sources. Swapping saturated fat-laden foods, so that's Phil's takeaways, processed meats and pasties, with unsaturated fats found in oily fish, avocados, nuts, seeds and olive oil has been shown to lower cholesterol. What we're also going to do is still give you protein, because I know you're really concerned about your muscle growth and repair. But again, with your protein, we've got to wean you off all this meat and give you more vegetable and dairy protein. So things like nuts and seeds, pulses, beans, things like traditional family foods like lasagna or shepherd's pie. I eat a lot of lasagna. Do you? And what you can do is half the amount of meat and actually boost the rest up using things like beans and pulses, because yes. they go really nicely yeah, in dishes yeah. like no, that. Yeah, I, I could be like to that. And that's one way of reducing the saturated fat coming from mm. your meat and really still keeping the protein, because yeah. you'll be getting it from the beans and pulses. The second way Lucy wants to try and reduce Phil's cholesterol is to increase the fibre in his diet. And there's two types of fibre. One's called insoluble fibre, like roughage, and you also get that from things like whole grains. Mm -hmm. And that helps everything to move through your gut more quickly. OK? The other type is soluble fibre, and that's in a lot of things like fruit, and also in things like oats. They contain something called beta-gluten. And what that does is it turns to, like, a sticky gel in your gut, and it helps you to not absorb cholesterol from your diet. And that obviously then has an impact on the cholesterol in your blood. I mean, just like everyone else in this country, convenience is important to you, I know that, mm. but so's living. Absolutely. And so there does come a point where you have to say, actually, I'm going to allocate some time to work out what I'm going to eat this week and to prepare a few things in advance, because it might save my life. Yeah. That's why I'm here, mate. The most challenging thing is to get away from this convenience aspect, and I'm sure that's not uh, typical for me, that's most people. It's just so easy to grab something out of a packet and, and eat it or cook it. Do you know, do you know, I'm quite excited about all this, because it's something new for me to concentrate on, staying alive. We'll find out later if the strong man has the willpower to stick to his diet. This series, the food hospital is putting the diets of the nation under the microscope. And tonight, we are asking, can eating blueberries enhance your brain power? They've been labelled a superfood for several years, thanks to the antioxidants they contain that are thought to guard against heart disease and neurological deterioration. But some scientists now think they could also stimulate brain activity in the areas responsible for learning, memory and concentration and Professor Jeremy Spencer from the University of Reading has been studying the effect a certain compound in blueberries has on the brain. Blueberries are a very interesting fruit, and we study them because they're particularly rich in a group of compounds called flavonoids, which we know are active towards both the cardiovascular system and also towards brain function. 
One way in which they work is they promote blood flow to the extremities of the body and of course also to the brain. And increased blood flow to the brain will result in increased brain activity. But does increased brain activity result in improved brain power? And if so, could a daily blueberry smoothie boost our nation's productivity at work? The CEO of busy London agency Bliss Media jumped at the chance to take part in a food hospital experiment designed to see if blueberries can improve his sales team's performance. The more people can concentrate, the more efficient they are. So obviously if we can improve that, then that will ultimately help, help the business. Greg sets his team high targets. Their job is to persuade multi-billion pound global companies to sign up for mobile phone advertising. Working in sales, you have to have obviously quite high concentration levels and be on the ball all day. Kind of fairly important, I'm always kind of fairly lively, you know, you can concentrate, you have to think on your feet quite a lot doing what I do. It's imperative that the team are working at 100% in order for us to hit our revenue targets. To test the brain-enhancing power of blueberries, the food hospital has enlisted the help of a local smoothie bar. In the first week at 10 a.m. each morning, they'll deliver a banana smoothie to every member of the sales team. In the second week, the sales team will drink a daily blueberry smoothie. The sales team have not been told which of the drinks contain potentially brain-enhancing flavonoids. At various times throughout the week, the team will complete a series of brain tests. And if the flavonoids in blueberries do improve brain power, there should be an improvement in scores in the second week, blueberries. Unknown to the media workers, bosses Greg and Charlie have also been asked to keep an eye on productivity in the office. I'm fairly sceptical in terms of how the fruit directly influences concentration, but it'll be really interesting to see the, the test results. So, will a daily blueberry smoothie make Greg's sales team more productive? Find out later. We Brits spend, on average, over a decade of our lives on a diet. And the media bombard us with news of slimmed-down celebrities who've achieved their svelte figures thanks to the latest miracle fad diet. The food hospital's next visitor is a fan of the maple syrup detox, made prominent five years ago when pop star Beyoncé was reported to have lost 20 pounds in 10 days on the diet. My name's Lauren, I'm 18 years old. I'm from Preston and I'm a crash dieter. In the last two weeks, Lauren has shed a stone on the maple syrup detox, but she's now feeling unwell. I get headaches and feel sick. I can't hold a conversation because I'm forgetting what I'm talking about because I'm so tired. It's not the first time Lauren's lost weight quickly, and the trouble is, after every diet, the weight piles back on. I just want to be able to learn how to maintain a, a healthy weight and without it going up and down and without having to crash diet all the time. So, can the food hospital Shaw and Lucy help? What does your crash diet consist of, Lauren? Just drinking the maple syrup drink. Maple syrup drink, okay. Yeah. Occasionally I'll have like a breadstick or a like... breadstick. Yeah. I have to say I want to try it. Will you make yeah. me some? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The maple syrup detox drinks ingredients are maple syrup, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and water. Devotees of the diet claim consuming nothing but the drink for 10 days cleanses your body of accumulated toxins, improves your metabolism, and can help you lose up to 12 pounds. So how much of this do you drink a day? About three litres. Three litres? Yeah. Wow. Right. <sighs> Bottoms up. It's actually not that bad. It's I can't good. taste the cayenne Down pepper. The no, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> There is some evidence that the spice cayenne pepper can increase metabolism slightly, but the idea your body needs to be cleansed of toxins is nonsense. Evidence clearly shows our body's organs do a good job of removing toxins. If they didn't, you'd feel extremely unwell. 
You lose weight because you're severely restricting calories. How often do you do this? Um, I do it every few months or so. What do you do once you finish the maple syrup? Um, I use myself back into eating, you know, n normally for me, which oh, isn't healthy. Take away nothing healthy. So it kind of, it's a cycle. It's that disturbance in your normal eating patterns yeah. that eventually the body just can't cope with. So in those periods when you're not dieting and you're eating normally, you put on a little bit of weight, you get worried about the weight gain, so you, all of a sudden you slam the brakes on and eat next to nothing. But each time you go through that cycle, you'll find the body copes with it less well and then weight gain is inevitable. Crash dieting is one of the leading causes of developing obesity really? later on. I didn't know that. Studies have shown that yo-yo dieters are also more prone to poor psychological health, and eating next to nothing can lead to fatigue. So to show Lauren the damage she's doing, Shaw wants to see how quickly she can cycle a kilometre. You're going as hard as you can. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like your legs are made of lead. Yeah. Okay. Two minutes in, Lauren is struggling to even complete the test. It's always the longest bit, the last yeah. bit, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well done. Well done, Lauren. You're OK. Yeah. Lauren will repeat the bike test when she returns to the food hospital in six weeks. It really gave me shock as to what I'm doing to my body because I have no energy whatsoever. I didn't realise how bad it was. Lucy wants to show Lauren she can eat food and lose weight and has put together a healthy weight loss plan which is good for anyone wanting to lose a few pounds. To ensure she gets plenty of nutrients, Lucy wants her to eat foods from every food group, but is restricting Lauren's calories to 1,500 a day, 500 less than an average woman needs, which generally results in the loss each week of a pound of fat. To make it easy for Lauren, Lucy has found a selection of convenience foods that contain a good variety of nutrients. And the best thing about it all is the nutrition contained in all of this will fill in all those little gaps in what you're currently eating and help your body work much mm. more efficiently and feel better. Because what you're doing at the moment is yo-yoing, having too little and then having far too much junk food and that's why your weight's going up. So if we can meet you in the middle somewhere and keep you stable and give you the confidence to carry that on, I think that's an ideal all round. Yeah. Later, we'll find out if Lauren can lose weight healthily or if she'll be tempted to go on another crash diet. Last month, a pasty. This month, mm. In Rochester, morbidly obese Phil has been following his heart-healthy, cholesterol-lowering food plan for three weeks. Are you having some of that hummus as well? Yeah, I love the hummus. With his daughter's help, Phil is trying his hardest to eat more fibre and less saturated, fat-laden takeaways, pasties and meat. Oh, look what I've just found. Well, for you. Oh, no, they're not. They're for guests. For me, I have tea round for guests. That's not for you. To date, he thinks he's doing great. I'll tell you what I'd do with this. Where I used to get... I'd uh, be peckish. Is that mine, mate? I'd get peckish and eat crisps or chocolate biscuits. Now, when I'm peckish, I'll just eat some of this, brown bread and hummus. It's actually quite toasty. Takeaways in the last three weeks, <clears throat> I can honestly say, um, one. Every time I've come in, he's eating salmon and rice. He's been so on top of it, and he's bit like he rings me nearly every day asking me to buy him food. And it's got the shop and buy me some salmon, some rice, and some even brown pita bread. I've just had two little bits of salmon, some rice and beans, and that hummus, and I'm full up. I mean, that would never have touched the stuff, that would have been my starter. Mm. But yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. Phil might be doing well with food, but what about the booze? A recent wedding was a big test of willpower. I probably only had about 12 pints of Guinness and about eight cans of Stella on top of that. So I was trying. More willpower is obviously needed. Even though I was trolled, 
I was looking at the food, there was the scotch eggs and all this, and I kept away from all that. I found this salmon, it was one of them big poached fellas that just sit there, and there was one at the back that hadn't been touched. And I had the ladle, and I was just ladling off its back, and I was just, so I was eating salmon. If you were under the influence, and you were still eating salmon, I was that, trying to that eat says something. People say to me, how's your diet going? And I say, it's not a diet. Because as soon as you call it a diet, you're doomed to fail. I said, you mean my uh, change in lifestyle? Is that what you're talking about? I said, no, that's going really well. After just three weeks, Phil feels fitter and has started running. This is what my girlfriend bought me. I think these are the extra padded Turbo Mark Fat Git model that you can run on and not break your knees. But it hasn't all been plain sailing. One week in, Phil started to worry he was losing his powerlifting strength. I was aching, my strength went down in the gym, my muscles, joints was aching, I thought this ain't gonna work. But then I just increased the protein, I took a few extra bits and pieces, I spread it out, and it went. And now, that was the second week I started feeling good, and this week in the gym, ironically, I lifted more than when I was at my strongest. So it's another myth that I've, I've, if you train, you don't have to eat fat and shit foods to get, to get strong. You have to eat a lot, but not necessarily the rubbish I was eating. Will Phil keep up the good work, or will the novelty wear off? Find out later when he returns to the food hospital. As well as lowering cholesterol, a high-fibre diet like Phil's can also decrease your chances of getting Britain's second biggest cancer killer, bowel cancer. The Food Hospital has launched a fibre challenge to encourage people to add more fibre to their diet and record their resulting bowel movements. Human Resources Consultant Andy has been on the fibre challenge diet for two and a half weeks. One of the changes that I noticed is the flatulence to the extent where I now have to have a separate duvet just so that I'm not inflicting any pain and suffering on my partner. <laughs> When I'm tempted to go for the wrong thing, I have the handy reminders of the Fibre Challenge posters to remind me which is the right thing that I should be reaching for when I open this cupboard. Best bit's probably knowing that it's doing some good. Beforehand, I used to come home from work and think, right, just gonna sit on the sofa now and veg for the rest of the night. And now, I've, uh, yeah, it's given me a bit more energy. to visit the food hospital is a worried mum and son. Six weeks ago, Becky received the bombshell she has celiac disease and is now terrified her son Alfie has it too. Alfie is showing classic symptoms of celiac disease. Indigestion, bloating, abdominal pain and diarrhoea. It affects one in 100 people in the UK but as it has a genetic component, the fact that Alfie's mum has it means his chances of having it rise to one in 10. Alfie will be seen by the food hospital's GP, Gio Mileto. Okay, Becky and Alfie, welcome. So tell me about your tummy and how it bothers you. When everyone's outside playing, I have to stay inside because I get um, cramp if I go outside. So what sort of things do you like doing when you're outside? Going on the trampoline. Trampoline? So you can't do that if you've got a tummy ache? No. It'd be nice to try and sort of not have that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, OK. These are Alfie's blood tests here. One is something called the TTG, which is antibody levels. And in his case, it's actually quite high. So it makes it very likely that he's got a celiac disease. Right, now, okay. he's not had a biopsy yet. No. But I'd put my money on it probably coming back positive. When people with celiac disease eat gluten, their body's immune system mistakes it as a threat. This produces antibodies that attack the wall of the intestine, damaging its ability to absorb vital nutrients. The only treatment is a lifelong gluten-free diet. But as wheat, rye and barley all contain gluten and are in many family favourites, it's a minefield to know what you can and can't eat. Dietitian Lucy has some advice. Over here, we have a lot of foods that you and Alfie can eat safely. And okay. some of these are naturally gluten-free, so things like the rice or the lentils. 
other things have been produced so that they're gluten-free. So things like the gluten-free Jaffa cakes. Lucy wants to show Alfie that if he does have to eat a gluten-free diet, it won't mean he will have to give up all his favourite foods. Well, today we thought we might make a pizza. Do you like pizzas? Yeah. Yeah? So these are special pizza bases that are gluten-free. So the first thing, once you've put your tomato paste on your pizza base, you can pick what toppings you like. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. You're staying clear of anything that might be classed as a vegetable, is that right? They not your favourite? So Alfie, will you do me a favour? Will you cover up your ears? Right, very quickly. If you can't get them to eat vegetables, one of the things you can do is get the tomato paste and puree vegetables into it so they can't see it, they can't that's taste really it, they idea. can't smell it, but it's in there. OK, that's a good <laughs> idea. OK, and take them off. OK. <laughs> It's gone really, really well. Hopefully, when we get home, we can put some things into place for if and when he gets diagnosed. It's been really good. How's it taste? Would you know that this was a gluten-free pizza, or does it taste just like a normal pizza? It tastes just like a normal pizza. Does it? So you're not going to feel like you're missing out at all? Yeah. Excellent. You should never remove any major food group from children's diets until you know for sure you must. So Alfie needs to have a biopsy to confirm if he has celiac disease. Later, we'll find out the results. Coming up, we reveal how blueberries affect a busy sales team's performance. And can onions rival aspirin? Over the past fortnight, the food hospital have been running an experiment in this busy media agency to see if a daily blueberry smoothie would increase the brain power and productivity of the sales team. And Lucy and Gio have arrived to reveal the results. In week one, we got you guys to have a banana smoothie. Who liked it? I felt healthier. Did you? Yeah. That's a nice feeling, that's isn't it? Like SIBO kind of it effect. Effect. Pretty foul. You didn't like <laughs> it? Gentlemanly glasses. <laughs> In the second week, each morning, the sales team drank a potentially brain-enhancing blueberry smoothie. So how foul was the blueberry one? It was up there, but it wasn't, wasn't as bad, I don't think. Okay. So it might have uh, decreased my productivity picking the blueberry seeds out of my teeth. Right. <laughs> if the flavonoids in blueberries really do improve brain power, the sales team should have performed better in the tests during the second Blueberry Week. Now, the first test that we did on you guys was a letter memory test. You all remember that one? In this test, each worker was shown a series of letters without knowing how long the sequence would last. They then had to recall the final four. On the Friday of each week, the sales team did the test twice, once before their smoothie and then mid-afternoon. The letter memory test was looking at things like your accuracy, your ability to remember and your ability to take on new information quickly and discard stuff that you don't want anymore. As we get more tired in the day, you'd expect there to be an afternoon dip in concentration and the test was designed to see if blueberries would stop this. The graph shows that in Banana Week, their performance in the afternoon, as expected, dipped by around 5%. But in Blueberry Week, their performance actually increased by about 3%. So this could actually mean quite big bucks for a business if it's showing that something could actually increase your productivity throughout the day. So how about the outcome of the second test? In the Stroop test, the workers were shown the name of a colour but had to record the colour it was written in rather than the word itself. This was designed to measure their ability to filter out unwanted information. In Banana Week, their concentration tailed off, which is what you'd expect in any normal week. In Blueberry Week, the concentration levels dipped too, but not so far. It was actually a quite a significant difference between those two weeks in terms of your ability to do this test, which is a measure of your ability to filter out unwanted information. And so that in itself is obviously a very important measure of how well you could be productive. But did the manager's secret spying mission reveal blueberries boosted their team's performance? 
Interestingly, in the second week, there was quite a spike in people just sharing documents and collaborating with each other. I think it went up by 100% and we were monitoring people on the phones, creating new meetings with clients, so we actually saw that increase by 10% in the second week. So what did the company's sceptical CEO make of the results? The results were quite surprising. I wasn't expecting such a, I guess, a obvious shift. Blueberries are just one of those fantastic flavonoid foods that help to boost your brain, but you can pick any dark red or purple skin fruits and vegetables for the same nutrient punch. Things like blackberries, plums, red apples, red grapes and even aubergines can help to boost your brain and body. Nine-year-old Alfie from Somerset has been having the same symptoms as his mum, Becky, who has already been diagnosed with celiac disease. Today, he's come to Bristol Children's Hospital to have a biopsy to see if he has the same condition. The disease is often left undiagnosed, as many of the symptoms are mistaken for irritable bowel syndrome. Alfie will be put under general anaesthetic before a tube is inserted down his throat. I feel pretty scared because I don't know if I'm going to wake up when I've got the tube down my throat. You won't wake up, darling. You have to be brave for them, don't you? You can't break down and cry in front of them. So, yeah, I'm OK. A sample is taken from the lining of Alfie's gut. OK, we'll get the bar. If he does have celiac disease, there will be damage to his villi, the tiny hair-like protrusions lining the small intestine that are crucial for helping to absorb food. The biopsy confirms that, like his mum, Alfie does have celiac disease. Back home in Somerset, Becky puts her son on a gluten-free diet. Separate bread for me and Alfie. We have to have separate butters. We have our own tomato ketchup, don't we? Mayonnaise. Yeah. That's our cupboard. Nobody goes in our cupboard. Once someone with celiac disease goes gluten-free, they can become a lot more sensitive to it. So Becky has to prepare her and Alfie's food separately from her other four children's. I have to prepare mine and Alfie's food over here because we've got the toaster for the rest of the family over on that side. Um, and obviously you get the crumbs off the bread and if the crumbs get into what we're eating, basically it can make us quite poorly. Kids, lunch! But she's been able to find lots of gluten-free alternatives to Alfie's favourite foods. Some in there you can have and some in there you can't have. Do you know what you can and can't have? Okay. I don't um, miss my crisps that much because I can still have some really nice crisps. Once those who have celiac disease remove gluten from their diet, the gut can take up to two years to repair itself. But Alfie's new food plan is already having a positive effect. My tummy pains have got much better. I can go outside and play with my friends more often and um, go around their houses. So, so I can play with them. Let's go. I'm Dr Pixie McKenna, and throughout this series, I'm identifying the heroes of the food world. And today, it's the turn of the onion. I've come to Newant in Gloucestershire to join in the celebrations of this true food hero. The people of Newant have been celebrating this vegetable for the last 800 years. Traditionally, on this day, the town celebrated the start of the year's onion harvest. But today, the fair sees local onion growers competing to see who's grown the biggest, most attractive and flavoursome varieties. And the first thing I want to do is find out just how well the people of Newant know their onions. 
I love onions, to be honest. <laughs> Do you think they're good for you? Very yes. good for you. Why is that? Where have you heard that? Antioxidants, yes. right? What about you? Anything else? I agree about? with her on that. I don't yeah. know much about they're good or not. I just like them. Right. I'm a great believer in onions. Okay. If you've got a cold or anything like that, if you've got right. a cold, it's really good for you. And I think they uh, help your blood circulation as well. Time for me to do a little taste test in the annual onion speed eating competition. Ready, three, two, one, stop! I'm not sure eating onions at breakneck speed is good for my health, but what I do know is onions are a good source of vitamin C, dietary fibre and folic acid, which are all helpful for a healthy heart. In addition, some scientists now believe onions could also have the same blood thinning effect as aspirin which I'd say is definitely something to cheer about. We have a winner. I've come to meet Professor John Gibbons, who is interested in preventing life-threatening blood clots. Aspirin is used very effectively to prevent um, heart attacks and strokes, but in many people they have problems that have side effects. I do, I'm allergic to it, yeah. so this is very so, interesting so, for me. So aspirin will be no good for you. Mm -hmm. So w the big questions that are asked in this whole area of research is how could we better prevent thrombosis? Some of that's through drug development, but in this particular example, this could be with regard to how we, um, how we change our lifestyles, the yeah. sorts of diets we eat, and the sorts of things that are present in our food. Close your eyes and think of England. Time for me to do my blood donation in the name of science. Our blood has lots of cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen, white blood cells fight infection, and platelets are like a repair kit for when we cut ourselves. But some people's platelets clump together too much, which causes thrombosis, a blood clot, which can lead to a stroke or a heart attack. Half an aspirin can, for many people, help prevent this. But Professor Gibbons thinks an antioxidant in onions called quercetin could potentially do the same thing. We've labelled the platelets with a fluorescent dye and we are flowing them through tiny, tiny microfluidic channels on the microscope which mimics the type of conditions that the platelets in the blood will be exposed to in small arteries in your body. On the left we see blood that's not been treated with quercetin. The platelets clump together, ready to form a clot. But on the right-hand side, the quercetin stops platelets from clumping together, and therefore the blood is less prone to clotting. So does that mean simply eating lots of onions could thin our blood? Another scientist, Julie Lovegrove, has helped to run a trial on a group of volunteers. Yeah, we have done some studies looking at uh, quercetin-rich onions that were naturally bred to be high in quercetin. Um, made this into a soup uh, and fed it to a, a small number of volunteers. It was only a small study. And we have found that um, it did have a, a significant effect on reducing their blood clotting uh, ability. You'd need to eat lots of onions to have the same blood thinning quality as aspirin. But some farmers are starting to breed quercetin rich varieties and generally red onions contain the highest amount. So while they don't yet rival aspirin, they may well do in the future. And in the meantime, eating onions is good for your heart. Coming up, crash dieter Lauren and morbidly obese Phil return to the food hospital. Well, Phil, you have lost. Six weeks since 18-year-old Lauren from Preston came to the food hospital seeking an alternative to crash dieting. Yo-yoing between eating junk food and living on nothing but maple syrup had left her feeling unwell. Lucy put her on a healthy weight loss plan. So how she got on? Welcome back, Lauren. Now, last time we saw you, you were drowning yourself in about three litres of maple syrup drink yeah. a day. Are you still doing it? No, not oh, at all. Good girl. <laughs> so, what are you eating now? Balanced meals, really. So, in the morning, I'll have um, fresh fruit, and then 
maybe a handful of brown, fl brown flakes and then um, almonds on top, you know, for protein and carbohydrates. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you feeling better? Yeah, so much better. I'm, I've got more energy. Last visit, Lauren weighed 10 stone 7 pounds. In six weeks, what effect has replacing the maple syrup drink with healthy eating had? It's a big change in six weeks. Really? You've lost a stone in weight. Really? Yeah. That's another stone in weight lost without a fad diet. Can't believe that at all. And that's by eating more calories than you were, <laughs> yeah. but in a structured way that your body yeah. can deal with. Last visit, Lauren did a bike test. She cycled a kilometer in three minutes, 52 seconds, and was left exhausted. Now she's eating healthy food. Will she have the energy to beat her previous time? Faster, faster, faster. That's great. And in she comes, the final straight. Yay! Yay! And you've smashed Completely. your last time. <laughs> Oh my God, that's such a big difference. At two minutes, 15 seconds, Lauren's almost halved her previous time. That's awesome. I <laughs> know, that's brilliant. And you barely look like you've done anything. <laughs> and it's all because your body's got the energy to do it. Yeah. You're not running on empty anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now that Lauren has achieved an optimal weight for her height, she can maintain it by eating the same number of calories that she burns. To do that, she will probably need to gradually increase her calories towards the 2,000 mark, which is the recommended intake for a woman her age. When I was fad dieting, I look back on it now and I just think, what a ridiculous thing to do. It's not healthy, it's not the solution. I'd never ever recommend doing a fad diet to anyone. Powerlifter and actor Phil is paying a final visit to the food hospital. Five weeks ago, Phil had high cholesterol, was morbidly obese and was eating himself into an early grave. He was prescribed a healthy heart food plan, but can just five weeks change a lifetime of abuse? Hello. Skinny lady. Oh, not quite. Not quite. As skinny as I can be. How are you? Yeah, really Very well. Good. How nice are you? Nice to see you. Marvellous. You look a lot smaller. That space between your braces is not bulging as much as it used to. No, it's definitely gone down. Do you know what? It's fantastic. I, it really is. It's, I can't believe in, in, in just that short space of time I've got more energy. I can train for longer. My daughters have said when I go home every night now, instead of just sitting in front of the telly, I'm out walking the dog. I'm just doing more. I've just got more energy. I'm not eating anything fried, I'm not eating any, anything processed, no pasties, no curries, no fish and chips. All that's gone. All Which that... is astonishing, considering how much of that you were eating before. Yeah, it was. Now, the $64,000 question, could you keep this up? I feel too good to, to go back. I've laid off the, the booze as well. I've, I've had the odd night. What happens on the Friday nights? I've been sitting in with a girl and watching telly. Really? Good boy. And I had a glass of wine instead of all them Guinnesses. How many glasses of wine? <clears throat> I need two. Yeah. Really? But do you feel better Pretty for big that? Glass. Oh dear, definitely. Time to find out how Phil's new lifestyle has affected his cholesterol and weight. Excited. Let's get on. Press standard there instead of athletic. I'm quite upset. Okay, Phil, off your step. Well, Phil, you have lost nine kilos in weight. That's astonishing. Crikey. That's almost a stone and a half. I know. And the important thing about that, five kilos of that weight loss is fat. That's why your tummy feels better. You've lost nearly a stone of fat. Crikey. You have lost a bit of muscle, but that's normal when someone adapts and adjusts their diet and lifestyle, but that will come back. Yep. The fat won't. So, well done. It means you're no longer morbidly obese. Really? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just obese now. Yeah. Oh, that's yes. good. And the other proof is in your blood test results. When we first met you, your cholesterol was starting to creep up. It was 5.7. After only a month, it's down to 5.1. So Crikey. that's a big change. And you were worried before that you wouldn't get the jobs you were getting because you couldn't be the big man. 
still yeah, worried or not? No, not really, because funny enough, someone's in the gym, you look bigger. I said, well, I've lost a stone and a half. He said, no, but your shoulders look bigger because my waist is going in. Absolutely So right. it's all about, you know, so... Um... So you're going to be a muscly ogre, not a fat ogre. <laughs> I think you're a great example of what can be done if you put your mind to it and you understand why. And I think all credit to you and I wish you all the best in the future. So I thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello, Mo, you all right? Good. I've just had all me me big reveal. Right, what's happened? All good. Cholesterol. Get this. Yes. Bordering normal. That's brilliant. <laughs> that is actually quite amazing. I know. I feel oh, great. Oh, I'm over the moon. We'll have a little celebration bean salad when I get in. Oh, a nice bean salad for dinner. Lovely. <laughs> all right, darling. See you when I get in. Bye. Ta, babes. Oh, bless her. Next week on The Food Hospital, we investigate the truth about water and a potential fiery fat buster. Jeepers. You're feeling that now? <laughs> My mouth is burning. Can The Food Hospital help a woman with a devastating skin disease? I, I do get upset over the whole condition because it could be so limiting. And a man with erectile dysfunction. In your case, these arteries are blocked and so blood can't flow enough into the penis to get an erection. Oh.